Hello and welcome to Lady Applejack Speaks VA, a VA channel here on YouTube that focuses on the Netflix series Stranger Things. I am a little late, but yes, I am back with another episode for Thirst Trap Thursday. This episode is for Series 6 Bad Romance. It's um, Episode 3, and yeah, we're on Episode 3 of this new series, and it's just hard to believe, where we follow the storyline of Eddie Munson and Elizabeth or... Lizzie Beth Weston. Um, Lizzie Beth is a jammer for uh, a Chicago roller derby team. And she basically meets Eddie through roller derby. He comes to one of her bouts. So we're picking up where we left off. Um, he had asked her to go out on a date. So this is a week later on November 7th, 1987. Um, that falls on a Saturday, and we're looking at it being around 6 p.m. And let's see, what else can I tell you about this episode? This episode is PG-15 for strong language and some compromising situations. Um, nothing sexual, but compromising nonetheless. So listener discretion is advised. Uh, there are no trigger warnings, and there are no peppers for this episode. Um, it's going to be kind of a good old-fashioned episode i think maybe possibly um so the episode title is please lose yourself in me and it's by a band called my bloody valentine it was on their november 1987 album ecstasy um very small album didn't really make too much of a dent here in the u.s i believe it did more um it did better commercially over in the United Kingdom where it was recorded to start with. But yeah, this is an interesting album because there was only 3,000 of these albums pressed and sold in stores. Um, keep that in mind as we go through this episode because this album is going to pop up every now and then. So um, let's see what else. Uh, this is an Eddie's perspective. So we are going to be in Eddie's narrative. Um, you can either fourth wall it or you think of his internal dialogue, whichever you prefer. And without further ado, we'll just jump right into the episode. I hope you enjoy it. Eddie's point of view, the Dwight dorm. <sighs> okay. Breathe. Breathe. You two have already hung out twice. This, this should be a piece of cake. <sighs> Lizzie Beth and I hung out more, once more, after the Halloween party. It really wasn't a date, per se. Um, just meeting for coffee and to study and also just kind of catch up. It was midweek, so a lot had happened between that Halloween party and then. And even though I've seen her twice, I couldn't keep my eyes off of her even then. She is like those illustrious hummingbirds in my grandma Hazel's garden. Beautiful, fleeting, and simply full of, of a bright life. I knock on her dorm room door, shifting nervously from one foot to the other. In my hand, I hold a small bouquet of gardenias. It took three different floors in Chicago proper to find gardenias in stock. I was relentless in finding one that had her favorite flower. If that meant I had to go all over the city, I would do it. Soon the door opens and there she is. Lizzie Beth Hummingbird. Uh, hey. <sighs> wow. You look... <laughs> overdressed. 
She looks breathtaking. Wearing a black leather motorcycle jacket, a black off-the-shoulder sweater with a lacy tank top thingy underneath it, and ripped jeans with fishnets, and a simple pair of black Converse. She looks amazing. Oh, no, 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 definitely not. You, you look beautiful, hummingbird. She blushes, murmuring a soft thank you before closing and locking the door behind her. I guess she's getting used to the fact that I'm calling her hummingbird. I've been doing it, God, ever since the night of the party, really. She turns back to me, smiling up at me with that gorgeous smile. Uh, anyway, I was thinking uh, we can go grab a slice at Gino's East and uh, maybe roam around the mall a bit. You know, innocent shit. <laughs> that sounds fun. So, so, yeah. Are you ready? I offer her my hand and wait. Wait for her to change her mind. Wait for her to flutter away. But she doesn't. Instead, she laces her slender fingers between mine and takes my lead. Eddie's point of view, after dinner, at Water Tower Place Mall. <laughs> I still can't believe that you also like pineapple and cheese pizza. I thought I was an anomaly. <laughs> the perfect man does exist. <laughs> or you're just a total freak like me, Weston. We had finished dinner about an hour ago and had been loitering around the mall. Not ready for either of us to part ways. The more I spend time with her during this past week, the more I adapt to life without Allison. I begin to realize how much Allison and I well, we were water mixed with oil. Like, it, it just never could mesh. We fought more than we enjoyed each other's company. Or, well, now that I look back, most of the time it was her picking the fights. Oh, oh, look, Sam Goody. <laughs> Do you want to go check out the new releases? Her enthusiasm makes me smile. Yeah, of course. Let's go, sweetheart. <laughs> God, this music's terrible for a music store, isn't it? <laughs> we hover near the listening stations for about 15 minutes. That's when I saw it. Oh, oh, holy shit, no way. They have the new album from My Bloody Valentine, Ecstasy. Hmm, I don't think I've ever heard of them. Oh, well, it's not really a surprise. They're not really that big here in the States. Uh, they're mostly based out of the UK. They're definitely not normally in my wheelhouse, but Dustin kind of got me hooked on them recently. They're an alternative band. Like, uh, like Till Tuesday. Have you listened to them? Yeah, I have. I, I actually like them. 
Yeah, so they kind of have that same sound. This album, though, God, this album, they are, they're only pressing like 3,000 units of this album. <sighs> to be honest, I'm kind of shocked that they even have it here in the States. I thought it would all be over in Europe. <sighs> Looks like this is the last copy, too. <sighs> Fuck. I wish I got paid this week, but, uh, yeah. I got one more week till my paycheck, and, uh, yeah. I wonder if they do layaway here. Well, how much is it? <laughs> Too much for us poor college kids. Oh, well. <sighs> it's just not meant to be, you know? And no worries. <clears throat> I do, however, need to get some blank cassette tapes. Oh, okay. Um, well, you go do that, and I'm going to continue to poke around here a little bit more. Okay. I'll be right back. I go on my search for the cassettes, and for the hell of it, I decide to look for a store clerk as well. Curious to see if I could either apply for store credit or lay away that album. It's silly. I know. But I really wanted that album for my collection. I was in the middle of talking to the sales associate when I feel a tug on my jacket. I turn to see Lizzie Beth, her eyes full of that sparkle, mystery and mischief. Hey, um, we should go. Go? Uh... Yeah, yeah, um, I, oh God, I forgot my wallet at the restaurant, and, oh, my God, it's got everything I have in it, my social security card, my, my driver's license, oh, God, I'm so sorry, N no, no, um, that's okay, um, thanks again, sir, uh, maybe we'll swing back later. Right. Well, thank you two for stopping by Sam Goody. Liz tugs me along, hell-bent on getting out of that store. I mean, I get it. The last thing you want to do is leave your wallet somewhere in Chicago. I didn't have the heart to tell her that it's certainly long gone by now. We are four stores away when she pushes me into an empty hallway. I shake my head, confused, as she smirks up at me. She lifts her baggy sweater, revealing her soft hand on me. And <laughs> the Ecstasy album. I can't help but to laugh in shock. Fuck, seriously? Lizzie Beth. What? Do you know how ridiculously corporate Sam Goody is? <laughs> they can spare one album. I don't think it's going to break their bank. Here. A gift from your hummingbird. <laughs> oh, God. Lizzie Beth. Always so quick to the naked eye. <laughs> Jesus. Now I gotta return the favor. She raises her brow. Her smirk growing. You don't have the balls. <laughs> you wanna bet? What's the wager? If I get it, I went another date with me.
And if I win, you name your price. Hmm. Okay. Deal. <laughs> Are you going to at least tell me what you want? No. I prefer to have an element of surprise when it comes to you. <sighs> Fair. Okay. See that gift shop over there? The Christian Outfitters? You're going to steal from the Holy Rollers? Go big or go home. Fine. I dare you. <laughs> you better make it good. I hand her my newly acquired album, winking at her. Stay put. I'll be back soon. I peck her cheek before casually walking across the mall and going inside the gift shop. I had to make this damn good. 20 minutes later. I walk over to her, keeping my face deadpan as she looks at me, sparking. Chicken now? <laughs> it's okay. We all can't be perfect. I wait until I come closer, reaching into my battle vest pocket. Not so fast, sweetheart. Hold out your hand. Go on, hand out, palm open. <laughs> she does what I ask, and I take the small, delicate figurine out of my pocket. Gently, I rest it in her hand, and she looks at it, in awe. Well, <laughs> it's a crystal hummingbird. I saw it, and I knew I had to lift it for you. Apparently, it acts like a sun catcher, too. Wow. It's, it's gorgeous. Okay, <laughs> you win. Uh, uh, not so fast. I think we both deserve whatever it is the other one was going to ask for. So, if it's okay with you, I would like to still get my date and... You, what do you want, Hummingbird? Truthfully? Truthfully. You? Like a hummingbird's wings. It's all a blur. Soon her lips are on mine. Her arms around my neck. And the crystal figurine still in the palm of her left hand. I'm slow to react, but I react in the only way I want to. I pull her closer, wrapping my arms around her waist. Only one word can sum up this very moment. Ecstasy. I'm not going to be able to do that.